four counts of first degree murder, two counts of robbery, second degree assault, third degree assault of a police officer, five counts of use of a deadly weapon to commit a felony, six counts of possession of a deadly weapon by a felon, number of victims claimed, four, criminal penalty, death penalty. Welcome back guys, this is not something we are reading from a crime movie. This is something we are reading off the record of Nico Allen Jenkins, aka Nico Jenkins, the most dangerous prisoner in the world. Are you ready for this ride? Buckle up and let's go. Nico Allen Jenkins, sometimes also called Nicholas Jenkins, was born on September 16, 1986. He is an American spree killer convicted of committing four murders in Omaha, Nebraska in August 2013. The murders occurred within a month after he had been released from prison after serving 10 and a half years of the 18 years to which he had been sentenced for carjacking committed at the age of 15 years and for assaults committed in prison. Jenkins stated that he had committed the killings at the command of the ancient serpent god Apophis. If you are wondering who the ancient serpent god Apophis is, According to Egyptian ancient mythology, the god Apophis is the god of chaos. And Jenkins competently represents this chaos. He was found competent to stand trial, found guilty of the four murders, and was sentenced to death in May 2017. Let's dig into him and his history. Jenkins was born in Colorado to parents David A. McGee and Laurie Jenkins. Jenkins became a criminal record or he began a criminal record at the age of 15 years old when he was charged with carjacking and an aggravated assault. As far as his murders are concerned, at about 5 a.m. on the 11th of August 2013, a patrol officer discovered two bodies in a white Ford pickup truck which was parked near a city swimming pool at 18th and F Street in Spring Lake Park. There were two victims in the truck who were later identified as Juan Yuri Peña and Jorge C. Kajija Ruiz. Both of them had been shot in the head and their pockets turned inside out. They were lured to meet two women for a sexual encounter. The murder spree began with this random double murder less than two weeks after Jenkins' release from prison on July 30th. On 19th August, around 7 a.m., the body of Curtis Bradford was also found outside a detached garage at 18th and Clark Street by a man returning home from a night shift at a convenience store. Investigators arrived to find two bullet wounds in Bradford's back. It was later revealed that Bradford and Jenkins had posed for a Facebook photo posted the day before. Bradford would be the only victim familiar to Jenkins. Jenkins's fourth and final victim, Andrea Kruger, was discovered on August 21st at about 2.15 a.m. by a deputy sheriff who was responding to shots fired call. 
her body was found lying in the road at 168th and 4th Street with multiple 12 gauge shotgun wounds to the face, her neck, and shoulder. Kruger had been returning home after bartending shift near 178th and Pacific Street. Moving on, surveillance footage showed her locking up the Deja Vu lounge at around 1.47 a.m. At 6.30 that evening, Kruger's gold 2012 Chevrolet Traverse SUV was found abandoned 12 miles away. Later that week, a news conference was held by Douglas County Sheriff Tim Dunning in which he stated that investigators suspected that the SUV had been abandoned roughly around two and a half hours after being stolen and that it was a feeble attempt made at setting the vehicle's interior ablaze. Investigations will proceed from there. Moving on, on August 30, 2013, Nico Jenkins was arrested on an unrelated terroristic threats charge. At this time, the evidence against him had mounted and investigators had the image of a female associate on surveillance footage at a local gun outlet buying the same kind of distinctive ammunition that had been used to commit the killing. The ammunition in this case was a Brennick Classic Magnum 12 gauge, commonly known as deer slugs. Additional footage pulled from cameras along the route to Kruger's abandoned SUV also helped in the investigation. And then, on the evening of September 3rd, Nico Jenkins confessed to all four murders during a rambling eight-hour interview. Jenkins told police that the acts were sacrifices to Apophis, a deity in the ancient Egyptian religion. He was charged with four counts of murder following the confession. Now, we move to his trial. In handwritten letters dated 3rd November 2013, Jenkins said he wished to plead guilty to all counts in the four murders and that he would protect Apophis's kingdom with animalistic savage brutality. On February 19, 2014, Jenkins filed a federal lawsuit seeking $24.5 million from the state of Nebraska for wrongfully releasing him from prison. He stated that his claims of hearing voices from Apophis were repeatedly ignored. In the six-page handwritten filing, he stated that being kept in solitary confinement augmented this schizophrenia. He further blamed correctional officers for the four killings because they allowed him to be free and by so doing, they enabled him to commit the murders. Jenkins then claimed that his problems were caused by mental illness and that he had schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder amongst other things. The judge then ordered a psychiatric evaluation and the psychiatrist concluded that Jenkins had antisocial personality disorder and was faking psychotic symptoms. After being declared competent to stand trial, Jenkins scored 68 on an administered IQ test, which meant that he was competent and as such the trial proceedings could 
go on. During proceedings, Jenkins requested that he be allowed to represent himself at trial under the guidance of adversary attorneys. Throughout the trial, Jenkins maintained that he acts under the command of Apophis. His courtroom antics, including speaking in tongues, howling, and laughing as prosecutors recounted the details of his victims' deaths. On 16th of April 2014, Judge Peter Batailon found Nico Allen Jenkins guilty of all four murders. Jenkins was then initially scheduled to be sentenced on August 11, 2014. The date was delayed indefinitely following a hearing held to determine whether he was capable of understanding the death penalty proceedings against him. On July 29th, the judge ordered Jenkins to be housed at the Lincoln Regional Center Psychiatric Hospital and that until doctors were satisfied with his condition. Officials at the regional center refused to house Jenkins due to inadequate security, but doctors agreed to treat him at a Lincoln prison. On April 20, 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to hear his appeal. Jenkins, to date, is still sentenced to death and languishing in prison. Furthermore, Jenkins would go on to carve 666 into his head and cut off his penis as a sacrifice to Apophis. What do you think of Nico Jenkins as an individual? Do you think he's suffering from psychosis or psychotic behavior? Or you think he is just cold-blooded? Stay safe out there.